you might not have the privilege of owning the latest and greatest MacBook or a beefy PC with the best NVIDIA GPU. But you know what? That's no excuse to not learn AI right now. Because in this video, I'm going to teach you how you can create a free GitHub code space, a machine that lives in the cloud that you can use to learn AI, even if your current computer goes on fire if you try to run any AI model locally. Let me show you how it's done. So to illustrate that this works, I'm going to be using my AI engineer crash course repository. And this is a repository that many people are currently using to become an AI engineer. And so this course contains a couple of modules which run AI models locally in your PC. If you have a very weak PC, this course just doesn't work and you will not be able to learn how to run AI locally. But there's no need to fear because you get free GitHub Codespace credits every single month that you can use to follow this course. So what you need to do is go to the repository and then click on code. You can then go to code spaces and click on the triple dots here. Now you can click on new with options and we can explore the different options that we have. So in my case, the region is set to Europe West and I can choose different machine types. I can choose a two core machine or a four core machine. Now I do recommend you to go for the four core machine because it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage, which is enough to run some smaller language models locally. And that's really the goal because this course is going to educate you on how to become an AI engineer. And you do not need the beefiest PC to do that. So once you create the code space, you actually see that Visual Studio Code pops up right here immediately. So you can just see how quick this actually is. And the repository is loaded in automatically. Right now, I already have all of these folders in the code space. So I can actually go in my terminal and type in ls, go to module one, and start up the module contents. So in this case, my course is based on Docker. And the great thing is, if I type in Docker in my command line, Boom, you can immediately see all of the Docker commands are printed out when I try to run the Docker command. So this is another advantage of GitHub Codespace. It comes pre-installed with a lot of very useful developer tools. So all I need to do to get started with my course is actually type Docker Compose up. And this will actually start up all of the local AI components. And here's another advantage. Because this is running in the cloud, the network speed is incredibly fast. Just look at how fast it's pulling in over two gigabytes of data. So here too, if you don't have the privilege of living in a city with gigabit ethernet, there's no need to worry because you are using this cloud PC, which is connected to very, very fast internet. So this is another advantage of using GitHub code spaces. Now, while the system is starting up, I want to prove to you that this actually starts out completely for free. So if I go to my profile here on the top right and I click on the icon and then I click on settings, I can actually browse to access and billing and plans and check out my usage. If I check out my usage, you can see that I have a completely free GitHub account. This is not a paid account whatsoever. And I can scroll down here and check all of the usages for the different GitHub features. Now here, you will eventually see the usage for code spaces. And you can see that you get storage and usage hours for free. You get 15 gigabytes of storage for free and you get 120 core hours per month. Now you have to divide these core hours based on how many cores your code space has. So in the case of our four core machine, we get 30 hours of free usage every single month. That's more than enough to follow my course 10 times. So yes, you can actually learn AI for free, even if your own computer is, without putting in a different way, pretty crappy. So let's go back to the code space and see if it's done setting up the project. So if we take a look at our terminal right now, you can actually see that this 5.3.5 model has been fully downloaded and, oh, it's actually being executed to answer a question. You can see that it actually answered with AI stands for artificial intelligence, which refers to the simulation of human intelligence. And that's because we've got a little bit of Python code here that actually calls this AI model like that. And so this shows you that this AI model is running fully on this code space, but I'm not going to leave it there. I'm going to show you a way more complex example, a full web app that will run locally that I can access on my local machine, even though it's running in code spaces that allows me to ask any question about any PDF. Let's see if that works. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this container from running and I'm going to go to module four, which is the full end result of this course. So I'm going to go ahead and type Docker Compose up once more. And then once it's done, I'll be back.
So the service has successfully started and we should be able to access the front end service on port 80. Now you might be wondering, how are we gonna do this? Because CodeSpaces is a cloud computer, right? But the great thing is that our ports are automatically forwarded. So if we check out the port section here, you will see that port 80 is mapped to this address. So if I just click on this icon, I'm going to browse to it directly and there you go, that's our front end. Now I'm gonna try and upload a new PDF. However, I already know that this is not going to work because if I open my network tab and I click on network, we can see where our network requests are going. So I'm going to upload the pro Git book so I can ask any questions about Git. So I'm gonna click select file, go to my downloads and then click the pro Git PDF file. Unfortunately though, you can see that my requests are failing because it's trying to hit localhost 9000. So the unfortunate part is that my code, just as a lot of other code, is mapped to localhost like this instead of this specific code spaces domain. So we seem to be getting somewhere. We have that port forwarded, but ideally we want to actually forward it to localhost. Now to do that, you will need to install the local desktop version of Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go ahead and open Visual Studio Code here, which I already downloaded. And once you've got Visual Studio Code downloaded, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to browse the extensions here and find the CodeSpaces extension and install it. This way, you can connect to your CodeSpace using your locally hosted Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go ahead and first go back to my CodeSpace. And in the terminal, I'm just going to stop the services with Control C. There we go. So that when I connect to the CodeSpace with Visual Studio Code, I can start from the beginning. So once you've got this extension installed, what you can do is you can go to this little button here to sign into GitHub. And I'm gonna click allow, so it will open my browser. And then I can just authorize as its accounts. There we go, gonna authorize. And we're gonna open Visual Studio Code again. And now you can see that I've got that code space I can simply connect to by pressing this button. And this is how you get into your code space from a locally running Visual Studio Code instance. So here you go, we've got everything set up. And I can just do the same thing that I've done before. So I can open up my terminal here and then I can browse to module four. And I'm just gonna do LS to show you that we have the same folder. And then again, I'm going to do Docker Compose up. Now in this case, when I check out my ports, you can see that the ports are being forwarded again, but this time it's being port forwarded to my actual local host. And that's because it's port forwarding thanks to my locally running Visual Studio Code instance. So in this case, if I go ahead and go to this port 80, you can see that again, we can see that PDF user interface, but now we are actually on the genuine local host path. And now that I'm here, I'm gonna go to inspect again, go to the network tab, and then I'm going to see if it is possible to upload a new PDF. So again, I'm gonna click upload new PDF and select that progit.pdf file. And you can see that now this upload request is actually pending. So it's able to hit localhost 9000 just fine. And because in my specific case, my courses do point to localhost a lot, I do recommend connecting to your code space via this Visual Studio Code desktop app, because not only does my material point to localhost often, other materials and tutorials do as well. So it's a little bit easier to just get used to actually running code space via your local Visual Studio Code. So if we just wait a little bit longer, then the PDF should be uploaded and we can ask any questions about it. There we go, the PDF is uploaded successfully. And now I can ask a question like, what is Git? And we'll see the large language model automatically respond. So after waiting for a while, you can see that the answer is being generated. And of course, it's not super quick because this is just a four core code space after all, but the point is, is that it's functional and that you can get started with learning AI. And you can always swap out this model for a cloud AI model later. So if you wanna get started with this, you can check out the first module of the course completely for free in the description down below.